Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Todd Stoffel. I'm the Director of Product Management here at MariaDB for uh, both Column Store, which is our analytics engine, and also MaxScale, which is our um, database proxy. Okay, this particular presentation is in regards to using MariaDB Column Store with Microsoft Power BI for visualization and reporting. Uh, we won't really talk much about MaxScale in this presentation, but I'm going to go over a little bit of the details of what Column Store is and how it works, and then we'll go into a demonstration with Power BI. The agenda for this presentation is obviously what I just said. It's going, we're going to do, talk a little bit of a column store. We're going to uh, do a Power BI demonstration. And then while the process is going on, you can be, feel free to ask questions. We'll do questions and answers in a chat window. Um, ReDB Column Store is a high performance engine supporting a variety of analytical use cases. Uh, it provides, uh, in comparison to other transactional engines like our own NODB or ARIA or something like that, it provides better performance in, in terms of big analytics when you have a large data set. Uh, it's easier to do enterprise analytics and it's uh, faster and more uh, efficient for doing massively parallel and analytic type queries. This could be the case where you're using an NODB currently and maybe uh, you want to also, it's a transactional system, but you also want to do a little bit of analytics on it. Uh, but the data has grown to the size where you either have to do some sort of partitioning or you have to index too many tables. This could be the case where you're using an ODB currently, and maybe uh, you want to also, it's a transactional system, but you also want to do a little bit of analytics on it. Uh, but the data has grown to the size where you either have to do some sort of partitioning or you have to index too many tables, uh, in which case it becomes very, very slow and, and cumbersome. It's very hard to manipulate that data. What you can do now is since Column Store is simply a pluggable engine, it's, it's already available in the server that you're probably already running, you can simply install the ReDB Column Store engine as an add on to your existing MariaDB server. Uh, you can then migrate data from your InnoDB tables into uh, Column Store. And so uh, maybe this is historical data, maybe your transactional information, yeah, and you can do uh, analytics queries and all kinds of business intelligence queries on that very quickly and easily all within your existing ecosystem. Uh, this is a sort of, uh, uh, this is the architecture. This is um, basically how it works. Uh, as you see at the top layer here, you have the clients, uh, which was like the PI Power BI tools, which I'm going to demonstrate later, your SQL clients, which you're already used to using, and then maybe some of the kind of sort of custom big data application. What happens then is those applications talk directly to the MariaDB server. Then what happens is the MariaDB server will translate that information into the uh, column store uh, structure or language. It communicates through pr the primitives or the intermediate results to return between the backend storage column or storage engine and the front end server, and they work in harmony as though they're one unit. So again, uh, in this demo, in this picture here, you'll see in the third level here is the storage engine is a set, completely separate layer than the server itself. Uh, you, that server could, like I said before, could be pointing to other types of engines as well, transactional engines, which would be represented by horizontal lines instead of the vertical lines that we showed uh, in the, the, for the column store. Okay, so for those of you not familiar with um, columnar versus row-based storage, I'll do a brief explanation here. Uh, Row-oriented uh, storage is something like uh, NODB or, or MyISM or things you're currently familiar with. It stores the data in a complete row, uh, where in column store, each column in your database is stored in a separate file. Uh, as you can see here uh, in the demonstration, um, it scans, when, when you're doing a row-oriented scan or lookup, you have our selection, you have to scan the entire row. And so that uh, can create some IO, create some uh, bottleneck because there's a lot more information to parse. In the case of column-oriented, it only goes to the particular um, column in question and just, just scans that, that information. Uh, also in row-based storage, if you want this to perform, if you want it to perform better, your, the particular column that you plan on using in your in your filters, like a where clause or whatever, uh, it needs to be indexed in order to do that. Index adds its own overhead to a system. Uh, so in the case of column store, you don't have to do that because we have something that's called extent maps. Uh, extent maps basically tell us where the data is located. It's sort of like our own indexing system. It tells us where the data is located, which files, etc. So what that means for this example is that we have to parse much less data. We go directly to the file and to the extent where the data is located and we're only looking at one column we have to parse the entire row uh, and we can return that data very quickly uh, so this is how a basic extent elimination works you run a query it has a filter which is in this case example between a given date uh, we then look in our because that column that column where it says shift date is using a date field we have already partitioned it in extents so not only we partition it horizontally in terms of columns, but we also partition it vertically in terms of extents. So um, if we know based on your 
your filter, we know uh, which file and which extent that data is located. So we go directly there. We don't have to parse an entire or traverse an entire file system, uh, which means we can eliminate extents that we don't have to touch. So we can easily uh, avoid having to touch a huge system um, just because we know exactly which file and which extent, uh, which happens to be in a, each extent is another file as well. So each column is its own file and each extent is its own file. So uh, we basically narrow down your data to just separate files we know right where that's at. We go right to it. We don't have to parse as much data as a traditional transactional engine is. And so we can pull that data back very quickly. And that's essentially how it works. It's, uh, seg it's segregated into horizontal and vertical partitions. Uh, now, some of the latest enhancements we've done to this product is that we have refactored our engine in order to work with ARM processors, uh, which is great cost savings. Uh, from what I understand, there could be as much as 30% savings on the AWS Graviton servers that use the, the new ARM A1 chips. Also, um, all of the new Microsoft Macintosh machines, all of the MacBook Pros, everything, all of that stuff is all using ARM processors now too, which allows you to do some development work on your own uh, laptop, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, we've done some other things too, like we've, we've created a uh, insert cache, which in, improves the performance of inserts by up to 4,700 times. Because basically what is happening is we're taking inserts that would normally uh, be very taxing on the system. If you were doing a lot of one-off inserts, you would have to touch them because of the very nature of the way column store works. Well, like I mentioned before, we've got all these different files, all these different extents, which creates a lot of files on the system. If you're doing inserts of an entire row, you would have to touch possibly a lot of records uh, in doing that. And so um, that then could be an IO bottleneck, could be a drive bottleneck. So what we've done uh, to improve that performance is we've created a cache. The cache is actually using an area table for caching. Uh, once it builds up a set of data that can be dumped in bulk, it's much faster for us to do it that way. So we'll take maybe 500,000 records, whatever parameter you've set, and dump the data uh, or flush it really is what we do. We flush it directly into column store uh, once it meets that threshold. The data is still available to you. Um, but prior to being flushed. So if you have to write to that cache and read it right back, that's also possible. And we've also improved the way the deletes work within column store. It's now six times faster than it used to be. Our main source of importing data, by the way, is a, a utility that comes with the product. It's called CP Import. It's a command line utility. It's used for uh, bulk high-speed data load. And just, you can do it from uh, uh, any kind of file, any kind of a uh, flat text file, CSV, whatever it happens to be. It can be loaded from uh, your local file system. It can be loaded from an S3 bucket. Uh, so all of these things are available for you to bulk load data into column store. And it's much, much faster than you probably ever experienced with a transactional storage engine. Uh, we have high availability uh, also with column store. If you need to have multiple machines, we, you can do this in a cluster. Not only does cluster allow for failover, but it also gives you um, this massively uh, parallel processing because you're using the uh, CPU. You can use the CPU from all machines. If you have a machine that has uh, 16 CPU and you have two machines in your cluster, you now double that. You can use 32. So your query will use uh, all of the CPUs on the machines. There is a difference between column store engine and uh, NODB in, in the fact that there is a, uh, there's an upper limit to the number of CPU that NODB can take advantage of. And the last I heard was around the 21 uh, CPUs. In column store, there is no limit. There's no upper limit. It can use as much CPU as you throw at it. So uh, if you scale up or out, uh, as long as you're giving your machine more uh, CPU, you can definitely improve the performance. You'll see dramatic improvements in performance between uh, say one instance size to the next, uh, if you're doing this in the virtual environment. Okay, now we're going to take some time to do a demonstration of uh, setting up a Power BI system and plugging it into a MariaDB database. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate now how to use uh, Power BI, Microsoft's business intelligence tool with MariaDB column store. And what you see on the screen right now is a Windows server that I've got running in AWS. I've already pre-installed Power BI desktop from Microsoft here. You can get that by going to microsoft.com and finding the appropriate link and downloading it. I'm just going to be using a free version of it. So I'll probably have to skip some registration pages when I do sign that up. One thing that you need to note before uh, opening up Power BI or using Power BI in conjunction with MariaDB is that you want to open up your web browser and download our, OD our ODBC connector. Uh, this is required from, from Microsoft Power BI standpoint. You need to have the official MariaDB ODBC connector installed. So what you're going to do is actually, let me just start from the beginning here. You can go to MariaDB.com and you can click on the download button here that shows up automatically. There's a tab on the right-hand side that says download. So we'll click on that. Uh, and then there'd be a list of tabs down here of different uh, products and things that we offer. In this case, we are going to be going to the connectors and you'll see a list of connectors here and different operating systems and versions. 
Uh, I'm just going to be picking the ODBC connector. And of course I'm on the Windows machine, so I'll need to pick the appropriate version, which in my case is MS Windows 64-bit. And then I will scroll down here and you'll see the download button. So I'll download, let that download, okay. So now I'm just gonna open this up and install it. You'll see the Windows installer appears when you click on it. Uh, it sets a new under the new license, by the way. Uh, just accept the terms and conditions or to the license agreement. And then I'm just gonna do a standard typical install, nothing special here, just run the install. That basically gives me uh, all of the bits I'm going to need here for uh, running Power BI. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up Power BI since that prerequisite is now complete, we can close the browser, by the way, and we don't need that anymore, it's installed. I'm going to open up Power BI, let it start up. Okay, and as I said before, there's gonna be some, uh, you know, some splash screens and some registration and stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna skip all of that because again, this we're just doing this for a demonstration. It's just a free version. Right now, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to click on the main screen here. There's a little uh, a link at the bottom where it says, get data from another source. Obviously, this is set up to collect data for, uh, by default from Microsoft products, but in our case, we're going to get that from um, RayDB column store. So we're going to click on get data from another source. And while I wait for that to load, okay. So now uh, it gives me a list of different um, sources of data. In, in this case, you'll see right here, this is MySQL database. Of course, that would work with MariaDB and with column store, but um, the MySQL adapter that's included with Power BI does not support direct queries. It, you have to import all of the data from your database into your uh, desktop or your workstation in order to be able to do any kind of calculations. If you had a lot of data, let's say you had a terabyte or a petabyte worth of data and your hard drive on your you know, personal computer was only 500 gigabytes, clearly that wouldn't fit. Additionally, your personal machine may not have near the resources in terms of compute as a server that's hosting your database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search in the search box here, it says Marie, and just search for MariaDB. You'll see that um, MariaDB is a built-in connector. It's built into Power BI. We have had this uh, built-in and partnered with um, Microsoft for a couple of years now, but you'll see that it shows up here. Now I'm going to click connect. Uh, now I'm going to have to put in a source. So let me grab the source. Okay, now what is important here is that I put in the IP address. I've uh, said I do not want to detect foreign key dependencies. It's optional. I said false here because column store does not use indexes. Uh, I'll explain. Or I've explained earlier how that works. And so it doesn't um, need indexes necessarily. Actually, we don't even support indexing because everything's indexed by default. Uh, so you'll just select false here. Uh, now there's two data connectivity modes. I mentioned earlier that um, import is where all of the data is taken off the database and brought into Power BI itself. And then that could be very time consuming. You can run out of space and you probably don't have enough compute on your local machine to support those kind of uh, analytics type queries anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the direct, direct query option, which is the purpose of this demonstration. And then I'm gonna say, okay. Now in this particular case, I've already pre-saved my credentials because I ran through this earlier, obviously. And so uh, it logged into the database. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this database that shows up here, it's called BTS, which stands for the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. I'm going to open that database up here by clicking the little uh, arrow. You'll see here in here, I've preloaded uh, this database with three tables. These are uh, airlines. These are information about airlines, the, uh, the airline codes, the airline name, airports, and then also flight information. Now, flight information is the big table. This has data going back, I believe, to I think it's approximately in the early 90s. Anyway, it has millions and millions of records. And so um, this is sort of the purpose of that. We don't want to bring this over into my system here locally. We want to direct query it on the server where the database is located. So I'm just going to say load now. And we'll wait for that to come in. So it's trying to create connections. They won't find any connections because, like I said, we don't have any uh, foreign keys that would tell it what to connect on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to click the model view. I'm currently on the report view. I have no uh, data here selected yet, of course, um, so there is no report. But what I'm gonna do is in the tabs on the uh, left here, I'm going to choose model view. And under model view, you'll see there's these schemas uh, represented here uh, for all the data tables that I've brought in. What I'm going to do in this case is just make a link between, let's say the airlines, 
uh, and the flights tables. What I'm gonna do is I know that the IATA code here, which is the airline code, represents the carrier code in this database. So I'm just gonna drag that over. It's gonna to try to automatically resolve the uh, connected relationship here. And so everything looks good to me here. It's a one-to-many relationship. Uh, then I'm gonna say, okay. And so now you'll see a link here between the two databases. So that's all we needed to do for that. Now we'll go back to the report view. In this case, I'm just gonna create a very simple report, but you could choose any of these bar graphs, charts, line, line charts, anything you want, but I'm just gonna choose a very simple pie chart just for the purposes of the demonstration. And so um, for some reason, there it goes, okay. Much means machines just run a little slow. Okay, so now we've got a graph here. Of course, there's no data here so yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fields here. I'm going to pick the fields that I want to add. So airports we're not using in this demonstration, so I'll ignore that. But I'm going to say the name of the airline. And let's just say we want to group uh, airlines by the amount of airtime they've uh, spent in the air uh, in, in this data set. So what will happen now is going to calculate. It may be hard to see, but there's a little, uh, little spinner going there. And now it comes up with your uh, data. Uh, so it's automatically calculated. What it did is in the background is Power BI, using the direct, direct query and our Power BI connector, it reached out to our MariaDB server, which is on another machine. It ran the query in that database and just the result set was sent back to uh, Power BI. This is why it came back uh, fairly quickly. And you can see now that it's grouped all of the airlines. As you see on the right here, Southwest, American Airlines, Delta. It's grouped all of the airlines now. Uh, by the amount of time they spent in the air in this entire data set. And like I said, I think this goes back to uh, the early 90s. You can see this in the billions or millions of uh, minutes in the air. And uh, then it also calculates automatically percentages, things like that. So um, that's pretty simple. Uh, the, the, the main feature here, obviously, is the direct query. And so we uh, invested some time working with Microsoft. Uh, and as you can see, the results, it's uh, working great.